Welcome to Career Journeys, a series of videos by the Consortium for Public Education. Here we explore the career experiences and pathways of professionals from a wide variety of careers to help you think about the skills you'll need and the paths you might take after high school. Hi, I'm Debbie Pixton with the Consortium for Public Education. Today, I'm interviewing Kate Totkus-Berry, a Technical Service Representative at Cabestro. Thank you for joining us, Kate. Hello, it's nice to be here. Kate, tell me about Cavestro and your role there. What do you do as a technical service representative? So Covestro deals primarily in liquid chemical, and my group in particular, our chemists come up with a system that our customers ask for in order to create different parts, such as refrigerators, hot water heaters, entry doors, and my personal position is responsible for going between the customer and the chemist to make sure that what we have supplied them is what they asked for and that everything works to their specifications. Did you always think you would be a technical service representative? How did you get there? Um, oddly enough, I didn't even know a technical service representative was a position until it popped up in my email as a job offer. So originally, I went to Clarion University and graduated with a physics degree and a mathematics minor. And while I was there, I ended up becoming friends with an individual who got pulled on full time as a coworker at TPG up in Cheswick. So <laughs> after graduating college, I reached out to him and he was able to get an interview for me as a contractor. And through that, I worked with them for three years on flat glass research and industrial uh, businesses. So from there, I ended up interviewing with Covestro because contract work is not a permanent position. And they liked my background in industry and ended up pulling me on as a full-time employee. So what do you love about your current position? So the first thing that I really enjoy about my current position is the fact that I get to travel. Not everyone gets to travel in their jobs, and traveling has kind of been an important thing for me since I was little. So the fact that I get to do it for a professional thing is kind of nice. Uh, the second thing I really like is the fact that with travel comes the experience of working with lots of different people. And I personally really like working with people, and the fact that I get to broaden my pool with each customer I get to work with is really, really exciting. And also working with people is the third thing I very much enjoy about my job, which is problem solving. Uh, with my position, I have to do a lot of problem solving on the spot, which is very challenging and very exciting for me. And what are some other skills that make you particularly good at your job? So with my job specifically, um, one skill that is very important is communication. Because uh, not only do I get to work with my colleagues here in Pittsburgh, but I get to work with a wide variety of individuals at each customer site, ranging from people working on the factory floor all the way up to potential CEOs of that company. So communication is extremely important, and I've come to find that it is one of the biggest um, things in my position that I need to get better at, but is also very fun. Other skills that make me very good at my job are being able to think outside the box and think on the spot very quickly. So problem solving is a good key, but if you can't do it very quickly in my position, it's not always a very good skill. Uh, along with that comes speaking with other people on trying to solve situations. So being able to admit that you don't know something is a very important part of my job. And once you admit that you don't know something, you can ask other people to assist you in making sure that the problem you are presented with is solved quickly and correctly. What does a typical day look like for you, Kate? I know you mentioned you travel. Is that every day or tell me about how that balances? So for me, I have three different typical day scenarios. The first one, which does include travel. Um, I do travel maybe once a month. And one typical day for me would be an entire day of either being in the car or combined with flight. And that can be up to eight hours plus, depending on how far away my customer is. 
I have traveled to Mexico, Canada, and multiple different locations across the United States. So, second typical day after travel would be a customer location. So, waking up in a hotel is usually early, and then you go to the customer site. Uh, you're usually there maybe eight hours plus, depending on the situation, whether you were running a trial or you were trying to fix a situation that they have to which you were called out for. And that can last, you know, a couple of days up to maybe even seven, depending on the actual outcome of why you are visiting the customer. And then my last typical day is in the office here in Pittsburgh. So I usually arrive in the office in the morning and check up on my emails, make sure that my expense reports have been completed, if not, or, or if not, still in, in the works. Oof. Um, also, I work on customer trial reports that I present to my group and my manager, and then my manager also presents to other groups and their managers. Uh, lastly, if I'm not in the lab with my fellow coworkers, chemists and techs, I am catching up with other individuals who I have not seen in a bit due to travel. <laughs> yes. What kinds of things should a student in high school do either academically or for their extracurricular activities to help prepare for a career in this field? So in terms of curricular, I would definitely say that students should focus on maybe not getting straight A's, but definitely completing their courses and being able to graduate high school. That is very important. And also with extracurricular activities, make sure you find something that you enjoy. Um, it is important that you do an extracurricular activity, if not multiple, depending on what you find you actually like, because employers will look at that and see that you are a hard worker, that you work well with others, you are good at time management, and that you have broader skills than just those that you would get going through high school. What kind of post-secondary training do you need? Do you need a bachelor's degree? So for my position personally, yes, I did need a bachelor's degree. Um, not that it needed to be in physics, but it did need to be within the sciences. So what they were looking for specifically was that I was able to work technically and understand the general concepts of chemistry for what I do. Not that I do chemistry, but I need to know the basics in order to perform my, my tasks. Uh, but in Covestro, they have a wide variety of positions, ranging from those individuals who only have a technical degree coming straight out of high school, or all the way up to a PhD, which are usually our chemists, and anything in between. What questions should people ask themselves if they are considering a career in your field? So the first question that somebody should ask themselves if they're considering a position like mine is, do you like to travel? Because a lot of the time when you're in my position, you have to travel to multiple different customer locations across the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So you should probably be comfortable with air travel and traveling by car. Uh, with that, you should also ask yourself, do you work well with others? Do you work well with a variety of different individuals ranging in education types and backgrounds? And if so, are you able to communicate with them in a way that both of you understand and that both of you are able to solve problems together? What's one more piece of advice you would give to anyone aspiring to be in this field? So my last piece of advice that is kind of a, an interesting one is don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, everyone makes mistakes and it may seem like whenever you get out and get a job that making a mistake could be the end of the world. But in actuality, if you end up making a mistake, are you able to learn from it? Are you able to take what has happened and turn it around so the next time you're presented with a similar situation, you know how to tackle it? Kate, thank you for sharing your experiences and thoughts with us today. For more information or to learn about other careers in the Career Journey series, visit our website and check back soon for our next installment. Thanks!